Those bends, man, I didn't even know you could do that with a harmonica until about a week ago. <laughs> hey, what's up guys? My name is Mike and I've been a Micro Four Thirds nerd for quite some time now. I bought into the system back in 2017 with the GH5 and I've kind of expanded my lenses uh, from then, which makes me now a long time Micro Four Thirds fanboy because that's the lenses I have. And today I'm talking about my two favorite lenses for the system that don't get talked about as much as I feel like they should. And that's the Lumix 12 to 35 and the 35 to 100. <laughs> So I got the 12 to 35 uh, when I picked up the GH5 back in 2017, and it has been my workhorse lens for, for forever. Um, I will admit it's not the most exciting lens because it's a 2.8 all the way through the 12 to 35 focal range, which is the same as uh, 24 to 70 focal range in full frame terms. And you're doubling your f-stop as well to get in full frame, a 2.8 becomes 5.6 which won't give you the most subject separation. It won't blur out the background as much as something smaller. But I'll tell you, this lens is always the one that I grab. Uh, I'd always start with another lens. I'd start with maybe a Helios 44-2 and get a few shots with that. But eventually I'm coming back to this lens just to make sure I get the shots. And, and that's what this is. It's the trustworthy, um, go grab your B-roll, close up, uh, wide enough to, to get the scene. And then uh, on the 70 male side, on the 35, it you can get close enough and you can still kind of get some good subject separation with this. And I always, I always dreamed of getting the 35 to 100 to fill that out. And, and recently I picked that up used off eBay and I, I've been using the 35 to 100 now for a little over two months and could not be happier with these two lenses. As micro four thirds lenses, they just check all the boxes. They're lightweight. They cover all of your focal range from 24 to 200 in full frame terms. And they have image stabilization, which uh, wasn't the biggest thing that I was going for. But now that my primary camera is actually this Pocket Cinema 4K, that image stabilization has been very nice to have. This is an unstabilized sensor. And so it just allows for a little bit more room. I'm still, I've still built this out to be a pretty heavy rig, but it just, it smooths out a lot of those edges as you will see from this footage. All right, so just to give you some examples of what the lenses look like in the real world, here's, I just went out to the, to the lake uh, near where I live here and got some clips here that shows the compression that you can get at the long end of the 100 mils, which is nice. You don't see that kind of compression generally with the Micro Four Thirds, but you can find it. And it's such a small lens. It's like, granted, for a 70 to 200 style lens, just a joy to work with. It's got that image stabilization. There is a bit of uh, st stabilization on some of these clips. There it is, folks. Nature at its best in the backyard. Little guy stocking up for winter. This was the, the first day of snow uh, for the winter season this year. Hooray! Okay, now we switched to the 12 to 35. You can see what it's like uh, when I'm just walking around with an unstabilized lens there. Here is, um, you know, the kind of separation you can get if you get up close to your subject. Now, I am aware that you can do this with pretty much any camera, including a cell phone these days. Um, it's all about framing, like this shot. It's all about that framing, baby. Look at that. That's a beautiful image. Okay, so just to do a comparison here, this is the 12 to 35. Look at the background here. I'm going to switch to the speed boosted Sigma 18 to 35 just because this is a fairly common 
uh, lens to use with the Micro Four Thirds, and you can see that it is quite a bit more blur, um, if that matters to you. So right now we got the Sigma on the right, and the Lumix on the left, and you know it's it. There is a difference for sure. Does it that much of a difference that it that it matters? It depends on on what you're shooting and what you enjoy. Um, and for me, honestly, most of the time it doesn't really matter. Um, but you know, it is still fun to make play around with that kind of background, like doing portraits or uh, photo photography stuff. You do definitely want to have that blur. So really, there's there's two major downsides to these lenses. It's really nice having 2.8 through the entire focal range, but 2.8 in micro four thirds being about a 5.6 is really it, it's not letting in enough light for certain situations. If you're doing concerts, things uh, in low light, um, I mean, micro four thirds in general probably is not going to be the tool for you. But these lenses specifically, really, they're not great at low light shooting. So to show you what I'm talking about, here is the 12 to 24 out in my yard, just uh, at dusk, a low light situation. And then I'm gonna switch it here to the Sigma 18 to 35 with the 0.71 speed booster. And you'll see exactly what it means. It, it looks pretty close at first until I open up that aperture and then it really leaves the Lumix 12 to 35 in the dust with how much light it lets in. As we're getting closer to the amount of light that a Super 35 sensor would bring in. And the second downside for the lenses would be the focus by wire system. With the Blackmagic camera, you don't actually have the ability to set it to linear. To my knowledge, if that's wrong, put it down in the comments. I'd love to know. Um, but if you're working with uh, GH5 Mark II, G9, G9 Mark II, GH6 cameras, then you can set the focus motor to linear, and that really fixes the focus issue. You can grab focus from the same point. It'll go back to the same point, just like a manual lens or as close as a digital lens can get to a manual lens. And they, they just end up feeling a lot better. But specifically on the Blackmagic camera, the focus can be kind of a bitch. Uh, kind of like a lot of things with the Blackmagic. It's just, it's kind of a manual system. So you set your focus before you start recording. Uh, and you're not really gonna try to pull focus too much or any of that stuff because it's not one of its strong suits. Am I missing something about these lenses? Was there something that went around? Have they Are they killing babies or something? Like, I don't understand why more people don't just embrace these lenses and talk about them. They're small, they're lightweight, they're sharp, they're both weather sealed. This is the 12 to 35 Mark II. This is the 35 to 100 Mark II. There's a Mark III of the 12 to 35 now and not yet for the 35 to 100, but it is discontinued. So I would expect that in the future, there will be a Mark III of this as well, something to do with the coatings that are on them. But if you get the Mark I versions, they work great still with Micro Four Thirds cameras. But I, I, been scratching my head why not more people talk about these lenses so i just thought i'd put out into the youtube ether that these lenses are great and they're my favorite uh, micro four thirds lenses out there for all of the reasons that micro four thirds is my favorite system these lenses just partner up with that so well uh, but that's just my opinion. I'd love to know your opinion. It seems like most people in the system lately are, are praising the Olympus lenses. Uh, but the professional Lumix lenses seem great to me. But uh, please tell me where I'm going wrong. And uh, if you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. If you like Micro Four Thirds content, subscribe. There's going to be a lot more coming your way. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.